Hey guys, welcome back to an interesting video in Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Zaya updated complete guide for patch 4.3a and beyond. So, a couple of uh, interesting changes in patch 4.3, most notably the addition of Berserker's Greaves. And this has given a lot more freedom to ADCs in terms of builds. Because basically, prior to patch 4.3, you always had to kind of go for Phantom Dancer. Because Phantom Dancer gave you like a total of like 55% attack speed. And it's really difficult to get attack speed from other means. Now, in the new patch, if you just go for Berserker's Greaves... Uh, which gives you 30% attack speed, plus you go for Legend Alacrity, which gives you a total 20% attack speed, you're basically getting almost the same attack speed as a Phantom Dancer uh, without having to actually build a full item. Of course, you do lose out on a little bit of AD as well as the movement speed. However, um, you know the main reason you're building Phantom Dancer is for the attack speed, and that's why Phantom Dancer is now not the best item anymore, or not really a, a great item for ADCs anymore. So let's jump into what is the new Zaya build for this patch. So first item, you actually have two options. Now, I've noticed that majority of the time you want to go for Shield Bow, and the, the reason is that personally for me, when I'm picking Zaya, I'm normally only picking Zaya into a high threat comp because I'm picking Zaya for her ultimate and for her feather. So that means that when I pick Zaya, the enemy team is going to look something like, let's say it's a Riven top, Rengar jungle, Akali in the mid lane. Um, that sort of deal like everyone wants to jump at you and generally this means that they are assassins or divers and therefore I'm gonna go shield bow almost all of the time which of course gives me that lifeline shield and of course gives me great base stats as well however uh, for people who like to pick Zaya into like any team comp and they just like playing Zaya, then Shield Bow may not be the best in every match. If you can afford it, uh, if you can afford not to go for Shield Bow, you can actually, or not even can, you should actually go for Storm Razor. So Storm Razor as a first item is still really good. It gives nearly the same stats as um, Shield Bow, nearly the same, but of course it gives you um, slightly less attack speed and it doesn't give you the physical vamp. However, it gives you the energized passive which of course allows you to slow down an enemy as well as do additional damage. Now why is this slow important? Well, the reason why this slow is actually important is because when you do Zaya's basic root combo which of course you can find um, in the Zaya basic guide which you should of course take a look at if you have not. That is of course, it shows you um, Zaya's skills leveling order as well as her tips and tricks and the combos. So if you do Zaya's basic root combo, um, it's basically involving using auto attack Q and then you pull back the feathers for the root. Um, that auto attack slow is going to help you land your extra two feathers from your Q and then pull back before they get out of range and they walk past your feathers. So Storm Razor is actually still really good uh, on, on Zaya, especially for that reason and also additionally for the pure damage that it provides you. But of course, for me, I always go for a shield bow, or not always, but like 90% of the time because I don't really pick Zaya into low threat team comps. So, next up, of course, we have the boots. We're going to go for, of course, the Berserker Greaves. This is going to give us attack speed as well as a little bit of AD and, of course, the movement speed. Now, next up, we're going for Navori Quick Blades, which, of course, gives us the AD as well as the crit and the ability haste. And the most important part is the Death Strikes passive to reduce our cooldowns. This is important for two reasons. Firstly, Zaya is very reliant on, of course, her feathers to do damage. So this is going to um, allow your feathers to come off cooldown more often. Uh, the E, the blade colors, and you can pull back the feathers more often to do more damage. Secondly, it lowers the cooldown of your W, which is, of course, the attack speed steroid that also gives you movement speed when you land attacks. This is also very useful because um, you're going to rely on your W together with Berserker's Greaves and, uh, of course, a little bit of attack speed from a shield bow as your only sources of attack speed. You don't go for alacrity, you don't go for um, Lethal Tempo, so you want to get your attack speed from your W as well as Mayor Boots as the two main sources of your attack speed, which is why I always go for Navori second. Now after Navori, we can go for IE. IE of course gives you uh, increased crit damage as well as just giving you a lot of AD in general. You can see this is a very very heavy AD build. Got 40 AD here, 45 AD here, 55 AD here. Then we go of course for the uh, Mole Reminder for the Armor Penetration as well as the Grievous Wounds. And we top it off with a Bloodthirster of course for even more AD, put ourselves to 100% crit. Uh, of course, gives us the physical vamp as well. So high life steal, high AD kind of build. Where of course, um, due to the fact that we now have the Berserker's Greaves, we can't afford to not invest too heavily in attack speed. So, if you decide to go for Phantom, uh, not Phantom. If you decide to go for Storm Razor as your first item, you can actually go for Shield Bow as your last item instead of Bloodthirster as well. Uh, that is also an option. 
So for the runes, we want to go for Conquer, and as I mentioned, we don't want to go for Lethal Temple because we already have enough attack speed from uh, Berserker's Greaves and Noble Quick Blades, and Conquer just gives you more value because it gives you more AD as well as, of course, giving you the Omni Vamp as well. Brutal, of course, to increase our attacks on champions. Coup de Gras, uh, of course, for the high damage against champions who are low, also can go for the Giant Slayer if you prefer, and Bloodline of course for the Omni Vamp. You could also go for Legend Alacrity if you prefer, and of course my favorite Bone Plating, uh, of course for the um, blocking damage in the lane phase as well as combo damage later on. Now for the spells, you can go for Flash as well as Exhaust. Uh, I go for Exhaust most of the time because I'm generally against very heavy, uh, you know, assassins and, and very heavy threat team. But in some games where I'm playing Zaya for the kiting, let's say you know, it's like the kind that. Uh, doesn't really burst you down. It's like, you know, let's say it's like a, a Riven in the top lane, a Darius in the jungle, that sort of deal. Um, then you could, of course, go for Ghost as well to just uh, kite them out more easily and prevent them from ever reaching you. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into talking about our gameplay. Alright, so now jumping into our gameplay. Now, of course, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Now, of course, be sure to address them or at least give it a like. So, um, in this game, of course, I'm picking Zaya because there is like you know a lot of champions that want to run into me. Champions like uh, Akali, champions like Trindomir, even uh, Mundo to a certain extent as well can be. I wouldn't say countered, but it is a pretty okay matchup into Zaya. Like you're not gonna shred him, but he's not gonna kill you that easily as well because you can kind of kite him out. And of course, a very bad matchup for Zaya here is actually Zaya against Braum because Braum is gonna actually block all of Zaya's feathers, and he's not really someone who wants to jump into you. He's going to uh, block your feathers with the shield and prevent you from laying down feathers behind people. So Braum is actually quite a hard counter to Zaya, but of course, I did know that uh, picking Zaya into Braum. So that was kind of a choice. And Caitlyn versus Zaya. Of course, Zaya is not really the best matchup into Caitlyn either. Uh, but arguably, who is really a good matchup into Caitlyn? Maybe like Ash is an okay matchup into Caitlyn. But there are not too many champions that could be considered a good matchup into Caitlyn. Either way, here you can see Caitlyn, um, you know, mispositions into the feathers. And here, um, able to almost. Okay, we do actually manage to kill her. And then here, we're gonna root the Brahm as well. And Soraka finishes off the kill, unfortunately. But we do get. Um, you know, both of both the support and the ADC. Now, this is a really important lesson when playing uh, against Zaya, and it's one of the reasons why Zaya is actually performing a lot better than what she should, especially in um, lower elos. Maybe like in um, mid mid master or so, people are playing well against Zaya, but in a lot of like lower elo games like let's say diamond and below people don't play well against Zaya and the reason that for that is Zaya introduces an entirely new kind of like mechanic into the game where you have to pay attention to where where her feathers are and if you don't there's really dire consequences and there's not too many champions that do that I mean you do have things like Caitlyn trap but those are like really obvious that you can walk around whereas Zaya's feathers are sort of like temporarily on the ground and you really have to pay attention to where they are if not they if not you will get rooted and that's one of the the main reasons why uh, people tend to play badly against Zaya, and sometimes Zaya tends to overperform just because of how people play poorly against her. But I played Zaya, you know, in like a high master, like almost grandmaster, and I found Zaya really hard to play because most of the time people are not going to let let themselves get rooted. They're gonna know that your feathers are there, and they're not going to overcommit to traits like what this Caitlyn did. The Caitlyn clearly, you know, I know what she was thinking. She was obviously trying to get the stun off from Brahm's passive, which she did manage to do, but uh, in doing so, she put herself in a very bad position. Uh, ends up getting uh, chain rooted uh, by me and Soraka and just basically gets destroyed afterwards. So it's kind of really uh, unfortunate, um, you know, what happened there uh, for her. Here, Pantheon goes in. Um, uh, Caitlyn's gone the safety, so he can only really go in on Brom. But Brom still has the stand uh, stand behind me up, um, so he can uh, of course just dash to Caitlyn uh, to safety. Doesn't even uh, need to flash here, so not too much we can really um, do uh, in terms of picking up kills in this situation. Another interesting thing is I don't know if you guys noticed, but I recently noticed you can actually rearrange the order of champions in the replay tool. So you can see that 
um, from like a couple of videos ago, I started to arrange champions based on roles. So you can see that now we have Garen on the top, followed by Pantheon in the jungle, followed by Lux in the mid, and then followed by me and of course my support. So it is um, now all in order. You can see the direct uh, lane matchup comparisons in terms of items, goal, and and whatnot. I think that that's definitely more useful than taking a look at pick order because draft in solo queue is honestly not too important in terms of the pick order. Like. Braum, like for example in pro play, would only ever be last pick because Braum is hard countered by enchanters, but in solo queue people first pick Braum anyway, so like you know that doesn't really matter all, all that much in, in solo queue. So uh, anyways, um, you know, so we arranged it in terms of uh, lanes and so it's a lot easier to see. So of course with that lead we got against Caitlyn, we are able to of course pick up Shield Bow and honestly Picking up one early kill against Caitlyn in the lane kind of just ruins Caitlyn's life, so we don't really even have to kill her again here. Like you can see that uh, already just off of that one, uh, one kill, we not only got a goal lead against her, but we also prevented her from um, using her strong early game, which if she doesn't have an incredibly dominant early game, she's gonna have, uh, of course, a very weak mid game because she's not ahead, and she's only gonna come back in the late game. So just by getting that one kill on her, we've essentially already shut the Caitlyn down, and we don't really have to do anything overly aggressive or we don't really have to, we're not really pressured to really do anything here because uh, Caitlyn is already kind of semi-incapacitated by this point just based on the fact that she died once which is of course really good news for us. Here Dragon Fight, uh, we already have like our first item and uh, of course Caitlyn has only now just back for her first item and same goes for everyone else on the enemy team basically but you can see here that we are already on the dragon, whereas the enemy team still takes time to come. Here, Trinimer actually comes in, nearly gets the steal, but ends up getting chained, CC, stunned, rooted. He tries to... I don't know why he's trying to go in for a kill on us, because no one is really even low. I thought that it would have been better for him if he tried to, uh, you know, dash back over the wall if his cooldown can come up. But he just runs straight at us, and basically means that he has no chance to escape, and probably no chance to kill either, because there's so much CC, and he doesn't have enough damage to really one-shot anyone at the moment. So now with Brahm um, backing, here me and Soraka are going to try our best to take some tower plates. Uh, my team is contesting the, the Rift Herald and they have actually gotten the Rift Herald as well because the enemy team doesn't really even bother to contest. So here, uh, you know, it's going really well so far. We're winning lane, we got Dragon, we got Herald and the game is going very very swimmingly um, so far for us. But of course we don't really know what the rest of the game holds. I mean of course I do because it's, it's a replay after all but... I mean, we're, we're gonna see what happens afterwards. We pick up our um, our Berserker's Greaves, of course, for that attack speed and, you know, one and, one and a half items. I guess you can say Boots is half an item. We're, re we're in really good uh, shape at the moment. So, something very interesting is that due to how far ahead I am, I realize, I realize that actually uh, I haven't even needed to ult this entire time. Like, I, I realized like the first time I ult in the game is around level 11 or so. I realized that I didn't ult the whole game, which is actually pretty funny because uh, my personal in interpretation of how Zaya is meant to be played is her ult should be used almost purely only defensively and the only time you want to use Zaya's ult offensively for me is of course when you want to uh, get the extra range to pick up a kill because Zaya's ult range is uh, longer range than her auto range like when someone's 1 HP you can use your ult to of course uh, you know kill them. Now another use of Zaya's ult is actually, is actually laying down feathers, but I never really uh, use Zaya's ult in that way personally because I find that you know just using it for uh, for the purposes of defensive uh, uses is a lot more useful. So here me and Pantheon get into an extremely long skirmish. We already picked up one kill. Here we're gonna pick up another kill, and uh, here we go on rampage. Pick up the Braum kill as well. This is actually an extended triple kill because we also got the first kill on Trinomir, but of course the timer uh, has ran out, so it, it ends up being a single kill plus a double kill. Uh, either way, we get three quick kills uh, for ourselves, and uh, that's a huge injection of gold for us. And here I'm actually really close to getting the Vori. I'm like 100 gold away, so I decide to actually. Uh, cancel my back at the last minute to try to get the enemy uh, crux. So here I spot the control ward. I actually removed the control ward, and because uh, and because uh, someone destroyed a tower on my team, that gives me the hundred gold that I need. Of course, seventy five plus thirty is like hundred and five gold. So we have enough for Navori, and we're gonna back and actually pick up the entire Navori quick blades. So you can see that we're now extremely ahead. You can see in terms of gold. Um, we are now at 7.5k, which is by far the most in the game, and you can see compared to Caitlyn, who has only 4.7k, uh, huge, huge lead for us. 3k goal lead over the enemy ADC uh, at the moment. Uh, from the direct comparison, we can now see on the uh, on the scoreboard, now arranged in order, of course. And uh, 
And yeah, so now, enemy team has now gotten objective bounties, our 7k go up as a team against the enemy team. All of our lanes are actually doing very well. I'm super fed, so is Lux. Um, of course, the rest of our team is just doing alright, but overall, as a team, we have a really, really huge lead, um, you know, you know, all together. So here, once again, just going to quickly clear up the wave, and honestly, not too much is happening here. We could technically go around looking for a fight against the enemy team, because we're so far ahead, but really, you know, there's no real point, there's nothing, there's no Baron, there's no Dragon to take anyway. I'm just going to take the Skull to secure the vision on, on uh, the, the Dragon Pit area. Uh, my team picks up another kill onto the Akali, and I'm just going to mid to clear out mid wave. Unfortunately, um, the Brom and the Caitlyn are actually taking top wave and top tower, but I decided it's probably not too uh, worth to run all the way back there to, to defend the tower. So instead, we're going to try to push the mid tower instead and see if we can trade the tier 1 tower for a tier 2 tower. Unfortunately, we don't really have uh, minions, and we decide to instead of forcing the mid tier 1, we decide to instead fall back onto the dragon. My control ward from the previous dragon fight is actually still in the pits. So I didn't even have to uh, use my control ward again, because the anything didn't even manage to clear it out. So that's pretty nice. And here, um, we're just, you know, of course just DPSing the dragon. And here Trinimir comes in again. This time he does get the steal. Uh, but of course he is going to die for it, he's basically just stuck in place, he's not going anywhere. Brom tries to come in to help him but just ends up um, dying himself. Akali gets stunned over the wall, has to flash out. And this is sort of the mistake that a lot of teams make against the, the uh, when taking objectives. Now we're so far ahead, the enemy team should never be able to get the objective. Why? Because we should have pulled out the dragon. And I've actually, I actually wrote this in the chat. Uh, even at the first dragon where you can see that if you replay to the first dragon Although there's no real point doing that I can just take my word for it me and Soraka were trying to walk away from the dragon to pull it out Then we we're pinging to pull out Pantheon got the message and he was uh, Starting to pull out the dragon as well, but Lux didn't get the message and she was trying to destroy a ward So thankfully first dragon Trinomir did not manage to steal successfully But the second dragon we basically make the same mistake again and this time Trinomir does manage to uh, does manage to get the steal and punish us for not pulling out the dragon. It's a really, really simple, really, really small thing. And here you can see this is my first out of the game to prevent Akali from jumping onto me uh, with her E. And and yeah, this is this was my first out of the game. And this is when I realized that, wait, wait a minute, it's been 11 minutes and 11 levels. Uh, but this is the first ult I'm using all game and that's when I started to find it pretty funny that the enemy team has posed completely no threat to me to the point that I didn't even have to ult. So, uh, anyways, of course now we're back on the map, we're just going to uh, pick up farm. Since my whole team is just trying to farm mid lane and no one is farming the jungle, I'm just going to go to the jungle instead. No reason to fight my team for farm when there's farm in other places. Here I'm starting out the red buff. I was pinging on my way because I wanted the Pantheon to come here to take the buff to get the buff share, but he just ignores the buff and goes straight for the fight. Not exactly a wrong move, so instead I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to pick up the buff myself and I'm going to run to the fight and see if you know I can help out my team. Here I actually end up frontlining for a little bit because you know uh, no one's really focusing me. Anyway, here I'm getting focused by Trindamir. I pop the ulti and I try to root him, but unfortunately I don't know how he managed to kill me here. Like It didn't seem like I was in his attack range. Uh, when I died, but apparently the damage must have gone through or something like that and I just end up dying. Could have actually just flashed away, but I didn't think that I needed to flash because I rooted him under tower, I thought I could just walk away, but uh, you know, I, because I got a little bit greedy with my summoner spell, I end up dying and giving over the shutdown um, to Trinimir, which actually is not a problem, because if you take a look at the scoreboard, even though like I'm 5-1-5, and five, Garen's 4-1, and one, Lux is 4-0-8, oh, you can see that in terms of goal, um, Trinomir actually has more gold than all of us, like I'm at 10.3 gold, Trinomir is at 10.4 uh, which is by far the most in the game, so despite being 4, 5, and 1, Trinomir has actually been farming extremely well and he's actually really really fed, so this is sort of an issue of course because Trinomir uh, poses a very huge threat to me because even though I'm Zaya, I can ult, I can root, but that can only buy so much time. Trindamir ult lasts a really really long time and if I ult and if I root him, you can see that I still managed to die anyway even though I was with my entire team. So that was that's not too good news for me. So I'm going to have to really look out for Trindamir here and hope uh, that I don't just end up dying to him. Here you can see Trindamir gets spotted by the Garen, ends up having to run away. And here, uh, you know, even though Trinomir is very fat, don't forget that uh, my, my team is still incredibly fat and the rest of his team is not doing too hot. You can see like Akali is only on one item, 
um, so far. She only has one item and a couple of components. Caitlyn has only just reached her uh, Phantom Dancer, which in my opinion is no longer the optimal Caitlyn build. Uh, we're gonna see if we can, of course, get a Caitlyn uh, gameplay and uh, do a new Caitlyn video uh, soon. Uh, but anyways, uh, enough about Caitlyn, back to Zaya. Here we're gonna recall, pick up our uh, Infinity Edge, and now we got the three, uh, three, three item core, three crit items. And uh, the next dragon is actually going to be spawning in 30 seconds. Now here, a pretty interesting scenario happens. You can see Lux actually ults down and checks Baron, and you realize the whole enemy team is grouped around Baron. Now, it, I honestly didn't notice it in the game itself, but only in the replay I noticed that actually the enemy team was doing Baron. Now, obviously Panther notice, notices. He tries to ult into the Baron 1v5 to steal the Baron. But uh, he just straight up dies, of course, and the enemy team actually gets the Baron. Now, I realize that we won't reach there in time, so there's no point walking to the Baron. The only thing we can do here is to try to um, to try to get the dragon as fast as possible before the enemy team can rotate over. Now, turns out the enemy team is not even trying to rotate over. They're actually uh, they're actually just recalling. So here, I'm gonna secure the dragon with the feathers. Uh, we get the dragon, and enemy team gets Baron. Now here, uh, Caitlyn is in no man's land. Uh, gets caught literally in between everybody. Whichever way she goes, someone's gonna kill her. So she decides to try to flash the wall. Garen Alti still finishes her off. And she dies. So good news, of course, because without their ADC, uh, it's gonna be harder for them to siege, harder for them to use their Baron buff. Um, so we're gonna head over to mid lane to try to defend mid now. Of course, the wave is coming in. Here, it's really difficult for us to defend this tower, so we're gonna just back off. I'm here laying down my feathers. I get down a double root onto both the Brom and the Akali. Here, I'm trying to flash forward to finish the Brom, but. Um, Garen ends up getting him anyways without me actually needing to flash. So a little bit of a waste there. Uh, but here what I'm doing is I'm going to quickly clear out this bot, bot uh, lane because the bot lane has been extremely pushed in um, due to the fact that um, the Mundo was actually pushing it just now. Here Pantheon once again ignores the red buff so I'm once again not going to waste time and just pick up the red buff myself. Now with like two members dead and like Caitlyn just revived them, their Baron push is more or less over so we've managed to more or less stave off um, the Baron with, with losing like only I think one or two towers, not too bad. We still have all our inhibitors, so it's still still not the, the worst situation in the world. The enemy team you can see is now even on goal with us at this point. Of course, majority of the goal is sitting on the Trindamir who's at 14k goal now. Uh, of course, Mundo and Caitlyn are also making pretty good progress in terms of uh, you know their items and their gold situation. Here, Caitlyn outs me when I'm at full health for some reason, not sure why. Uh, but here, um, the Pantheon tries to go for the chase for Mundo and Caitlyn, but honestly there's no point. Like there's no point to chase a Mundo and Caitlyn is already too far gone. So the better move is just to rotate um, back to other lanes and try to like you know defend other lanes and whatnot. So here uh, nothing too much happening honestly. It's just um, both teams jockeying for positions, jockeying for priority here. And here we're trying to get mid lane priority. Trinamur, you can see is split pushing, but he ends up actually um, going up towards the jungle, gets cut off by the, the uh, Trindamir, however his, the rest of his team is trying to engage onto us in the mid lane, so um, a fight ends up breaking out here, <laughs> uh, Mundo is really really overextended, I'm trying my best to do damage to him but I don't yet have uh, my armor penetration so it's taking a long time but we eventually managed to get both the kills onto the Braum as well as uh, the Mundo and with two people dead of course, um, we do want to defend the other lanes and it's prime time to get something done ourselves because of we, obviously we removed the enemy team from the map and this is somewhat becoming an exciting exciting match now. It's kind of an even match now. It's not like a complete stomp like what it was at the the beginning of the game. Now, of course, you can see kills-wise, it's still 23-8 to 8, but you can see the enemy team has been farming really well and as well as, of course, getting all those objective bounties because you can see that they're even in goal with us despite being like less than half of our kills. So here both Baron and Elder are spawning, here I'm resetting to get my last Whisper which I feel is going to be really crucial for the upcoming fight. So here uh, we have a choice, so Aaron enemy team could rush Baron again but we decide to go for Elder because if we trade Baron for Elder I think it's more beneficial because with Baron they likely cannot push when we have Elder and we can just kill them if they try to push. So yeah, we could trade but it looks like this time the enemy team is not going to do that. We can see that Trinamir is already coming to try to contest the Elder and so is Braum and Mundo. Now, the damage dealers, Akali and Caitlyn, are actually not here, so the enemy team picks a pretty stupid fight. We're trying our best to DPS them before Akali and Caitlyn comes. We kill the Trindamir already, ult the Akali, uh, ult, and here Stasis comes in uh, 
from the Lux to prevent her herself from dying uh, to the Akali. Akali is left at 1 HP and is just hightailing it out of there, trying her best to find a way to escape without dying now. I don't really care too much about killing the Akali. Lux is trying though, um, th decides not to in the end. Now here I was actually initially focusing the Elder Dragon, but I realized that this is actually at end angle because you can see that here the Garen is actually pushing in uh, and the mid wave is actually going, but because the Pantheon out to the Elder Dragon, I decided to instead commit to the Elder Dragon, but honestly I felt that we could have and should have uh, possibly committed to trying to end the game, although death timers on Caitlyn and Trinomir are relatively low, so don't know if that would have worked out. We secure the Elder Dragon, Brom Akali tries to contest, uh, but you know, of course they are too late, and here we're trying to chase them down to, to uh, of course pick up the kills. Um, the Garen does get the kill onto the Brom. But Akali does manage to escape. So here we're gonna back. We have our completed Molo reminder at this point. So hopefully the Brom as well as the Mundo will not be as big of an issue as uh, they have been. So here, my team is doing Baron, of course, with the help of uh, the Elder Buff. It's gonna be really difficult for any team to come and contest here. Just laying down the feathers to make sure Trindamir can go in. He decides to go for kills instead of going for the for the Baron, which is kind of mind-boggling actually. So he. Uh, you know, I managed to kill the Akali on the bat, and here Mundo is uh, getting chased by Pantheon. No point in chasing Mundo, so I'm going to uh, go to mid, try to push in mid, and try to end the game. Uh, only Mundo is left alive at the moment, and Braum is of course going to respawn soon, because he did get killed by Garen uh, after we secured the Elder. Here Pantheon just ults in, um, and we're going to all just push down mid lane together, the three of us, and we should be able to end the game here. Of course, Brom is blocking my autos onto the tower. I'm trying to. I was. I was trying to focus the tower, and uh, for, the tower goes down. Here, I'm going to get the root off onto both of them, which also gets the kill at the same time. And here, we have the dub. And uh, as usual, of course, I'm going to leave you guys with the stats. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and goodbye. Victory.